Hello and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Maryland Heights. It's our privilege to, uh, to worship with you and to share what we just love so much. We love God's word. He comes to us in so many wonderful ways right at the perfect time. And I've been really excited about the message that we get to share, the word of God that we get to share in just a few minutes. As we get closer to God's gifts and hearing his word and singing songs and praying to him and praising and just savoring what it is to be one of his children. We're going to lay before you a prelude. The point of the prelude is an opportunity for you to just let sacred music to just wash over you and to just run over you like, like water over hands that were just digging in the gutter. It just washes out the dirt and just clears your head, clears your mind, clears your heart to be ready for God's gifts. And so with this prelude, we hope that you have the opportunity to just let God refresh you and get you ready for worship. The Lord be with you. So now that you have had plenty of time to just get your mind and heart right before God, we have just some tremendous thing to lay before you because today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 24th in the year of Lord 2020. So throughout the service, we're going to have the bulletin right here for you and over the screen so that way you can follow along at home and you're definitely encouraged and invited to participate with us. And if this isn't uh, your thing, then definitely at least you'll be able to see the words and just enjoy all the things that God gives us to sing about, to praise about, to pray to him and to, to talk about. So our first song is a beautiful Easter song about the strife being over. We don't have to fight to save ourselves. We don't have to worry, are we safe? Are we okay? Are we at risk? Are things gonna fall apart? Instead, we get the opportunity here, God, just to come to us with all of his promises right now, come to you with all of his promises to say, the battle's over, the strife is over. You are a child in his kingdom. <laughs> Now we know. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The gifts of God come to us today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you adore us so very much, that you care for us, you build us up, you strengthen us, even when we are too short-sighted to rejoice at your plans for us. We see the moment, we see the now, and we let that affect us in ways that stomps out our hope and our joy. We pray that you'd reach out to us throughout this service, through all the words, all the songs, all the prayers, and allow us to be drawn even closer to you, to remember that this moment is not our life. It is not our whole picture. It is not our eternity. For you live and you reign, Lord Jesus Christ, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes to us from the book of Acts. It's the second of the two books which Luke, an early follower of Jesus, wrote as he, in the Gospel of Luke, describes the life and ministry of Jesus up and through his death and resurrection. And then in his sequel, the book of Acts, he tells us about how the church grows and expands and is filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, he starts off the book with Jesus ascending into heaven. He goes up into heaven so that he would be praying for us and watching over us with a promise that he would come back. At the very end, the angels essentially say, if you were listening to Jesus, get going. People need to be told about how great Jesus is and what he wants to offer the world. So here we go, Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them, he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men, two angels, stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second text is from one of the earliest followers of Jesus, one of the closest of his three apostles, Peter. And in this text, Peter uh, is uh, writing to the entire Christian church, telling us that even when we're going through persecution or just suffering in general, Hold on to Jesus, and he will bring us through it, because God has this wonderful plan for the way that he's going to lead us throughout our entire existence. 1 Peter 4 and 5. Beloved, 
Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel lesson comes to us from the evening right before Jesus was put on the cross, the night he's betrayed. This is right after he has supper with the disciples, the Lord's Supper, and then right before he leaves to go pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is a different prayer, only the Gospel of John, only the biography, which John, one of Jesus' very earliest followers and is closest to the apostles, uh, the biography which he wrote. It's the only place it appears. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence for the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out to the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you and that they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but those for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now have the opportunity to confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as Christians have done as they describe God's entire behavior, his entire activity, his relationship to us. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we've confessed this for 1,600 years. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Up until now, we haven't been doing children's messages with our worship services online, but then we started thinking, why not? So, uh, as our little people here today are going to meet us up in front, I invite you to uh, go get your little people, uh, wherever they are in the house, and just say, hey, come on over here. If they're not already there, they should be there. But if they're not, say, hey, come on over. We got, a, we got something that a pastor wants to share with you. So, let's go get our kiddos. So, if you ever hung out with me in my study, you know that I got a bunch of these heroes of the Bible. Right? I love having these when kiddos come in. And it's a great Bible. It's a great comic book. And it's put out by a company called Baker. I make a bunch of good stuff. And I wanted to bring you, we're going to put this up on the screen for the people at home. Uh, I wanted to bring you the story of the Ascension because I love the pictures of this Bible. And so it says, next step, where are they go? Heaven. That's right. Is heaven up or down? Up. Up. Uh, down is what? Oh. Yeah. Don't want to go there. So Jesus, he had been walking around for over 30 years. And then for about three years, he's talking to people and healing their diseases and teaching them and forgiving them. And then uh, he dies on the cross, comes back from the dead. And on Thursday was the 40th day after he came back from the dead. And that's when Jesus did the next step. Heaven. That's right. And so this is how they do it in the Scholarly Book Bible. Jesus says, and it's pretty close, he says, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what he promised. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is uh, easy to depend on, right? Knows what he's talking about. And he says, When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power. Do you like power? Yes. Yeah. Like big muscles? Yeah. Let me see your big muscles. Ooh, oh, oh, I don't know if our camera lens is that big for all those big muscles. And he says you're going to get power when God lives inside of you. And you will tell me, and I love this, you will tell people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, which is a big old city where they were. In Judea, which is kind of like if St. Louis is Jerusalem, it would be like the state of St. Louis, or uh, Missouri. Samaria, that'd be like Illinois. You know where all those Cubs fans live and, you know on the other side of the river, and to the ends of the earth. And then it says, and when he finished speaking, he began to rise up into heaven. And the book of Acts tells us that this is Jesus' last words to us, that we're supposed to go talk to people wherever people are. Now, if I saw Jesus flying up into heaven, I'd probably have the same reaction. They go, look, a cloud covering Jesus. I can't see him anymore. And then two guys in white, what are they? Angels. Angels, that's right. They look pretty strong, don't they? Yeah. They basically say, men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring at the sky? Jesus is gone. He's going to come back in that same way. And the message that the angels had was, Jesus said, don't stand around looking up. Get back looking to ground level and look for people to talk about Jesus. Sometimes we get confused about talking about Jesus. Sometimes we talk about the rules and the things that God says don't do. But that's not why Jesus came. Jesus didn't come to give us another rule book, right? Jesus came essentially to give us summer vacation, to set us free from guilt, from shame, from being in trouble, from uh, making parents angry. Have you made your parents angry? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But Jesus came to tell us, you, you're free from all that stuff. When you walk with me, people are going to want to hear about your joy, your hope, your happiness, and all the things that Jesus wants to pour into your life. That's what we're supposed to do. So are you supposed to sit around looking up? We're supposed to tell others. We're supposed to tell others about who? Jesus. And is he good or is he sort of a downer? Good. Always good. All right, so I invite you to pray with me. And you at all, I invite you to pray with me too. Dear Jesus. Dear, dear Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon. Or afternoon. We pray that you, we pray that you would get us excited. Get us and fill us with power, fill us with power to, say the right things, to say the right things to the people around us, to the people around us that, they also that they also would love you, would love you like you love them. Like you love In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. All together. Amen. Amen. 
If you've got little people at home, this is a fabulous Bible to do in-home devotions just like we did. Just take a couple of pages and your kiddos will love the pictures and you will love them as they get even more filled with God's Word. All right, let's go back and talk to the big people too. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who blesses us to have Jesus in our picture. Amen. Ever since Easter, this is the seventh week of Easter, ever since Easter we've been talking about what it's like to have Jesus in your picture as invisible hands, as a producer, as the builder. In so many ways, Jesus is in our picture. This is a big Easter theme because Jesus came back from the dead, fully back from the dead, and to be in this world in your life, to be in your life, because you and I, we really, we really need him involved. We don't need him to just have died a long time ago and said, see you later. We need him back in our life to be with us. And so this is going to be the, the last, the seventh and the last part of our series, Jesus in your picture. And one of the best texts out of the choices that we have today, the three that we have before us today, one of the best texts that has been shining in my heart and my eyes since I started getting ready for today's service, is the First Peter text. If you look at the first half of the First Peter text, it talks about suffering in the Roman Empire. Uh, that's not really a big thing that we have. I, I don't know any Christians who have been eaten by lions. Uh, nobody that I've been related to has ever been thrown in the gladiator arenas and had to outrun tigers and archers. Uh, that was a very real thing back then. But I, I love this. If you look at this text, and I'll put it up here on the screen, if you look at this first highlight part, he says... <laughs> Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. What I love about this text is in Peter's day, the big scary beast wasn't the coronavirus. The big scary beast in, in Peter's day was uh, Roman persecution. But it's really strange how as we look at this text, it's going to line up with a lot of the things that we have because we are anxious we are very anxious. And if Jesus is in our picture, there's other things in our picture, right? Right now, in my picture, there's several of my very good friends in the hospital. As a pastor, I want to go and visit them. I want to go and visit them like every day, pray for them, stop by and see how they're doing. But I can't. That makes me anxious, right? As a leader of people of a congregation, even if we're digitally connected, uh, people are still anxious. And, and as a pastor, as a servant, I want to, I want to fix that. I want to I want to say the right thing so nobody's anxious. And so uh, I'm not able to do that. And so that adds to anxiety. In your picture, you have all sorts of other things that are adding to your anxiety. Even if you're working from home, you're wondering, will I ever be able to get back to work? Will my kids ever be able to get to, go to school? Can we go see the zoo? Can we go to the mall? If you have a business like a store, you're wondering, are people still going to go shopping now that they've been shopping online for two or three months? If you have a restaurant, I can only imagine the bigger burden that you have. There are very unusual things where people are now saying, I have employees, but they make more on unemployment or almost as much on unemployment. And so I'm having a hard time just getting them to come back to work. All sorts of things are anxious, anxious, anxious things that are causing so much anxiety to build up on us. And honestly, sometimes you can feel like a 400 pound cat is sleeping on your face hard to get a breath. And in 1 Peter, to Christians who are suffering, Peter, as a Christian who had seen his fair share of suffering, ended up dying by suffering. He writes, cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, not only did Peter mean this, but God knew that you would hear these words right now. God knew that he would be on the hook to take care of your anxieties right now. And he includes that you to include you. How cool is that? God is reaching out to us from almost 2,000 years ago to tell you, don't be anxious because I care for you. See, that's what Easter is about. God comes back into our picture. He's not some God who did something a long time ago and then is just sitting up on his throne up there drinking his Dr. Pepper just waiting for us to check in with him after we lo finally lose the fight and die. No, he's not someone over there with a magnifying glass examining everything that you're doing to make sure that you're doing everything right and not messing anything up. No. He's the one who cares for you. And to care for someone, you have to be in their picture. <clears throat> we see here with 1 Peter, Peter describes the scene in, in their lives, as you can look at this text, the next part that's highlighted, 
He says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So not only is Jesus in your picture, but Satan is too. And, and we're told, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that, and I love this for our time right now, the coronavirus epi epidemic. It says, knowing now that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood, all Christians throughout the world. Right now, we have this worldwide epidemic, this pandemic, this whole thing over the entire world. Everyone is struggling with it. There was some extremely remote tribe in uh, South America just recently who has now gotten their first case of coronavirus. They, they prided themselves on being completely isolated from the world, and now they've got this case that shows that we're, we're, not, we're not isolated. Everyone is connected. We are around each other. And it's not just the devil prowling around, but Jesus is in that picture too. Jesus is in that picture too. And, and what I love about what this text says is this scene is not your whole life. Look at this, he goes, and after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, he himself will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. That verse 11 right there means to him is all the power, all the might, all the authority, the final say, and the say all along the way. It basically says he's the one who's in control. And what's his plan? His plan, after we have gotten through a little suffering, is to restore you, to confirm you, to strengthen you, and to establish you. My word of encouragement to you right now is this scene. It can crush our joy. It can make us very depressed. It can bring us very low. It can make us feel very hopeless and very out of control and, and very isolated from all that is good and that we depended on. But this is just one scene in the story of your life. Here in this text, we are reminded by Peter, who was going through suffering, as he was writing to other Christians who were going through suffering throughout the Roman Empire, and as God was writing through Peter to you and to me, he's telling you and me, this scene cannot last forever. I would love for you to think of your favorite movie. This isn't particularly my favorite movie, but uh, I think of a great epic movie that people really uh, know, especially if you're at least 70 years old like me, is the movie Titanic. Now, I do not approve of everything that took place in the movie Titanic. For goodness sakes, I don't approve of everything that goes on in America, but I still say I'm an American. But in the movie Titanic, there's a lot of things where everything builds up and other times where everything falls out. In the movie Titanic, you get this moment where Jack and Rose, the, the superstar let and the superstar of the movie, Jack and Rose, uh, they meet and I don't want to be too much of a spoiler alert, but the Titanic sinks. Ooh, I'm sorry if you didn't know that. But Jack is flirting with Rose, and Rose realizes she is engaged to somebody who's wealthier and has more stability in this future. And so she doesn't need to play along with this fling with Jack. And so there's a point in which she says, uh, no. You know, he's like, come on, I thought we were going to talk. And she's like, no. Now, if the movie stopped there, it would have felt very wrong. But you would have assumed that in that moment that the rest of the story was defined because what woman in her right mind would ever settle for homeless, meandering Jack when extremely successful fiancé is more than willing to make you a princess of capitalism? That'd be a very big demotion in a lot of ways. <clears throat> If we paused the movie in that moment and then told everyone to go home, it wouldn't feel right. That would be like us evaluating our emotions, the direction of our life, even the direction of the situation we're in by pausing us in this moment. But God is speaking to you right now in this moment so that that pause doesn't happen to where you only see the bleakness of things right now. God is telling you, don't hit pause and just take a stock of evaluation of everything going on in your life because things are stinking now. And before you hit pause, God 
puts this word out there. Here's my plan. To restore you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you. Now, there are a million reasons why God should exclude us. There's a million reasons why God should just let us make our bed and lie in it and just say, I didn't make you sick. You should have worn a mask and used hand sanitizer 90 more times. You should have kept 30 feet away from everybody. Uh, you should have taken your vitamins when you were a kid. You should have uh, looked both ways before crossing the street, whatever, whatever it is. God refuses to look at you and say, not my problem. Instead, God came back from the dead to be in this moment to tell you, as bleak as it is, it's like Good Friday. God is doing something amazing, not in spite of what's going on but through what is going on. Now I know this for a fact, because God chose you. <clears throat> Whenever I see that verb in, in the New Testament, I, see, I think of like uh, people at a produce department. You know, you go to the produce department and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go get some avocados, right? So you go to the avocados and if one is all wrinkled and shriveled up and has some cuts in it, has a soft spot, you're not, you're not gonna get that one. Right? If you go over to the bananas and there's some bananas that are really brown and maybe there's a puddle of juice beneath them, you're not going to get that one. Right? You see these people with a cantaloupe and then they, they like knock on it or they push in the little stem to see if it's fresh. Pineapples, there's all sorts of ways to test whether right. No one's going to take the bat. God came along. God came along like a shopper at a produce department and he saw everything in front of him. And the things that got in his bag, the things that got in his cart, the things that God wants to bring home with him, that includes you. With all of your bumps, with all of your bruises, with all of your bad decisions, despite all the reasons and all the ways that God should have chosen anyone else, you're hearing these words. You're hearing these promises because 1 Peter 5, God chose you. Let's say I go to the grocery store and I choose the nastiest banana. No one can walk up to me and say, you should not take that home. Well, maybe my wife could. But apart from her, no one can say, you can't buy that banana because it's my choice. God chose you. Not you, the whole studio audience, everybody, all the many, many people in the sanctuary. Not everybody in your house, not everybody in the feed, not everybody following the YouTube channel. Sure them. But this conversation is between God and you right now. God chose you. And that is a part of your picture. That is a part of the reality of this moment for you. And what did God choose for you? Like a gooey banana, he chose to blend you up and make banana bread out of you. I'm kidding. No, that was my grandma. No, but God chose to make your guaranteed future, to restore you, to make you right again, to fix you. So if your body breaks down, to fix that too. If your mind, mindset or your mental health breaks down, he chose you, and he will restore your wholeness. God also chose for you to confirm you. That means to, to like make a foundation for you, to make you stable, to make you uh, uh, immovable. God chose to strengthen you, to set you back upright, to make you strong, no matter how this situation has weakened your finances or your mental well-being or, or your health your hope, and God chose to establish you. I looked up the Greek on all these words, and they're beautiful words. Uh, this word, though, uh, not only does it mean to establish you, like, to, like as a house that can't be shaken, but I love this, to restore your insides, to rehabilitate, to fix, to restore, redeem, make perfect you. Right now stinks, I know. But this is not the whole movie. This is not your whole picture. Just like Titanic, there were a lot of ups and downs. 
well, there's a lot of downs for the boat, but for the people in there, a lot of ups and downs. It's for the story, for the audience, a lot of ups and downs. And in the end, a diamond is thrown over. ever. But that's not your story. That's not God's plan for you. He's writing the future and he's already written in for your life to strengthen you, to confirm you, to establish you, to restore you. In the holy and powerful name of the one true King. Amen. As your local Kingdom Outpost here in Maryland Heights, it's our responsibility, but honestly, sweet privilege to just get excited and share with you all the wonderful stuff God's doing as he's working in our midst, so that way you don't miss out. The first thing is, of course, is when are we going to reopen the sanctuary? Uh, the plan at this time is to have worship services online through the website right here uh, this week and next week, and then the following week, June 7th, start to have more of an in-person service. It's still up for discussion at this time as we're strategizing and making sure that we are keeping public health at our highest priority, uh, at the same time trying to get God's word out in the most uh, available, most accessible way. Because part of it is not just hearing words on a sound bite, but it's being together to build each other up. And so we encourage you to pay attention to our emails. Um, if you're not getting emails, please send an email to us. Uh, if, you are, if you've already done that and it's still not getting to you, uh, we'd invite you to check your junk mail filters and uh, whitelist us. Uh, sometimes servers and providers try to help us out and block a lot of emails. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and you can get the updates that way as well. If you don't have email, you can always ask a friend of yours who does have email to uh, get on our mailing list by sending an email to us and we can uh, and then ask them to uh, share whenever they get an update for us and we can send it to them. In addition to that, uh, we wanted to invite you to be a part of this great love offering that's taking place right here at Zion right now. Uh, last week, we asked people to bring in gifts of uh, food and uh, paper goods and products so that people can take when they uh, can't share, but then share when they have extra. If you would like to be on either side of that, either to uh, pick up some things at the grocery store and drop them off, we'll definitely make sure it gets to hungry and needy people. If you are having a little tough time with your finances, please, 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 please show your church family some love and allow us to send you home with peanut butter and cereal and brownie mixes and uh, mug cake box recipes, just great things that we wanna share with you. Uh, if, even if you're not struggling right now, there's gotta be somebody in your life that is struggling and so even if it's for their sake, please come by Zion during the week and pick up something to take home with them. If you are dropping off a donation, please do not leave it outside at the door. Uh, let us know that you're coming or you know, drop it off when we're already open so that way we can uh, bring those donations in to make sure they're safe, that they're clean, and that they're okay to give out to people. At this time, we're also inviting us to partner together to support and uh, sponsor the kingdom of God. All of the donations that you've been giving uh, they go to uh, pay for staff, pay for technology, pay for content, pay for hosting, uh, to pay for the expenses of having a building and a property and being able to, throughout the week, focus ourselves 100% on reaching out to people, praying for them and talking with them. And so uh, when you make a donation to a church, what you're doing is you're partnering with not only us, you're partnering with God to bring this word of life to people who are being painted in by the darkness in the very dark corners. So there are a couple of ways where you can partner with us. One way is to send us a check. You can uh, mail it here to us at our address. If you'd prefer to drop it off, you can uh, drop it off at our address during our regular business hours. In addition to that, if you'd prefer to do it technologically to get it done right away on our website, which is probably where you found this video, you can go click that donate button right there on our homepage and we have a great deal worked out with PayPal that'll get us um, all taken care of. In addition to that, if you just wanna take care of it right now, just take your phone and or your device and wave it over here at the QR code and it'll take you right to the page that uh, you need to get to to safely and securely through PayPal make a donation. Remember, this is us partnering together and together partnering with God to bring the word of life that people need. At this time, we invite you to pray with us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that this moment in which we are is not our eternal salvation. Please allow us to share the joy that we have in this situation and look forward to the wonderful things you have planned for us in our future. That your sun would shine through us to your delight, please. Fill us with the Holy Spirit.
We ask that you would watch over all those who are persecuted for the faith as we are eagerly making our way home. As they are persecuted, fill them with hope and joy and grant that they would witness even to those who attack them. Gracious, almighty Father, please restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. We pray that you'd watch over all those who step into harm's way, especially police officers, paramedics, firefighters, soldiers, intelligence agencies, healthcare workers, and those who serve the public good. We pray that as people's jobs and employments put them into harm's way of violence or sickness, please protect them, shield them, and allow their service to be uh, effective and deliver tremendous good. Gracious, almighty Father, please restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. We ask that you'd watch over those whose employment is not going well, either overworking because of the response or just the stresses of their job, as well as those who are underemployed or just out of work, whether they're on furlough with big promises or just out of work. We pray that you watch over all of us as things change worldwide and grant that as your people, we would meet those, those downers, those struggles as opportunities to show joy and the people around us would take notice and want that same joy. Gracious, almighty Father, please restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. We pray that you'd watch over all those who are at high risk and those who are caring for them. Please keep them healthy, please keep them safe, and grant that all the time and all the sacrifices would in fact make them safer and that it would in fact allow us to be able to keep them healthier by public immunity. Gracious Almighty Father, please restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. Please watch over those who are distressed and depressed and dismayed by the situation. We pray also that you watch over all those who in particular are sick, Sandy, Rich, Bill, Allison, and all those who we name before you in our hearts right now. Gracious Almighty Father, please restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish us. Gracious Father, you rule all things, and yet you dearly love us as your children. Please hear our requests and grant only that which is in our best interest and in the best interest of your kingdom. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, please remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Ordinarily, we have a song from the newer voices of the church at this time, uh, but because of the YouTube licensing and restrictions and all sorts of things, it's just, an, uh, just a great opportunity for us instead to go to our hymnal with uh, just some of the great treasures that are in there. Today, this song right now is uh, based on the song of Revelation, which the people of God are singing right now in their all their languages. This version has this phrase, Alabare a mi Señor. That's Spanish for, I will praise my Lord. And so as you're singing this song, we get to praise God and we get a glimpse into God confirming and establishing and, and strengthening and restoring his people, and that includes us. So as you get caught up in the song, I invite you to get caught up in you, in you having a part in that same beautiful being established. Mm -hmm. Oh, the sweet 
raining, ten thousands rejoicing, and all were singing praises to the Lord. Alaba, just after we die. Uh, definitely then. But you know God. You know God. He always has better plans than what we have in mind and than what we currently have. So wait for him. He will confirm you. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. He will restore you. The Lord be with you. Is it German? You know, I just want to turn it. 